Okay, geometers, here we go with our second to the last unit for the year. This is circle proofs, everybody's favorite proofs. And so this really combines all of the uh, knowledge that you have about proving triangles congruent or whatever triangles congruent, segments congruent, angles congruent from the work that we did back more towards the beginning of the year and all of the facts that we just learned about circles um, a few weeks ago. So just as a recap on page one, um, I have some review statements about um, statement reason proofs. One of the things that you have to make sure you do, you have to have the statement reason grid. And if you remember, you have to write out the word statement. And then you're going to underline it. And then you're going to make a little T-bar. And you have to write the word reason. And it looks something like that. Remembering that each statement has a corresponding reason to it, have things lined up. Um, you have to write the given and the prove and draw the diagram. If, and if there's not a diagram drawn for you, you need to provide one. Um, but you need to look at the prove line first because that's kind of going to direct you to how your thinking should proceed. So if it says you're, that you're proving triangles congruent, remember we had five ways to prove triangles congruent, either side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, 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 side, or hypotenuse leg. If it said that you need to prove segments or angles congruent, that typically we first prove the triangles congruent and then we used CPCTC, which stands for corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And then lastly, um, if you have to prove triangles similar, uh, we have our options are angle angle similarity, side angle side similarity, or side 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 similarity. Uh, and then I have a few uh, review statements about given um, things and then what you get from being given. If you're given that two segments are perpendicular, you're going to get right angles. If you're given an isosceles triangle, you get two congruent base angles and two congruent legs. If you're given an angle bisector, you get two congruent angles. If you're given a segment bisector, you get two congruent segments. If you're given an arc bisector, you get two congruent arcs. If you have intersecting lines, you get congruent vertical angles. If you're given two parallel lines, you have a couple of options here. You can either get congruent alternate interior angles or you can get congruent corresponding angles. And then all of our rules about the circles um, if you have an inscribed angle, you know that it's equal to half of its intercepted arc. If you have central angles, they are equal to their intercepted arc. Angles formed by a tangent and a chord are half the intercepted arc. And angles formed by a radius or diameter and a tangent or a portion of a radius or diameter, you get right angles from those. So keeping all those things in mind, we're ready to start our first proof. So we have, we are given circle O, which says uh, segment DB is tangent to the circle at B. We have segment BC and segment BA are chords, and that C is the midpoint of arc AB. And we're trying to prove that angle ABC is congruent to angle CBD. Now because we're not really dealing with triangles here, we're going to have to use our our um, properties about circles, chords, tangents, and all that to get our angles congruent. So let's mark up our picture. We're going to start, if we know uh, that C, let's start with that, C is the midpoint of arc AB, we know that we have two congruent arcs. We know that arc BC is congruent to arc AC. And then what are we going to get when we have this angle formed? If we're looking at angle A, B, C, what are we going to get from that? Well, that happens to be an inscribed angle, so it's going to be half of arc AC. And then if we look at the angle formed C, B, D, we know that that angle is formed by a tangent and a chord, and that is equal to half its intercepted arc. And we already know that the two arcs are congruent because it's a, C is the midpoint of those arcs. So this one's kind of straightforward, we can get right to it. So first things we're going to write down are given on our proof line here. So you already have the statement reason grid. You remember you need to write down all of the given. So we're going to start with circle O, and DB is tangent. at B, 
and you can use a little bit of abbreviation as long as you get the basics down. We know that BC and BA are chords. And we also know that C is the midpoint of arc AB. Of arc AB. And our first reason is given. This looks like I forgot the letter I. There we go. Okay. So we're going to uh, attack this proof this, the way we just did it. We're going to start with the first fact that we did was that C is the midpoint of AB. So our second statement, we're going to use that piece of given, is going to be that arc AC, arc AC is going to be congruent to arc BC. And our reason is going to be, if a point is a midpoint, then it divides an arc into two congruent arcs. If a point is a midpoint, then it divides an arc into two congruent arcs. And remember when we typically write these statements and reasons, we write them as conditional statements so we can apply the law of detachment. So now that we have established that we have congruent arcs, the next piece we're going to put in is going to be the angle, and you can start with either angle, I'm going to start with angle CBD, angle CBD, and angle CBD that happens to be the angle formed by a chord and a tangent, and we know that that property is that it's equal to half its intercepted arc, and the intercepted arc for that is arc BC. So number, reason number three is going to be if an angle is formed, if an angle is formed by a tangent and a chord, then it's equal to half the intercepted arc. It equals half the intercepted arc. Whoops, that should be a C. There we go. Okay, and next we can talk about angle ABC. Let me slide my paper down a little bit going to be number four. Angle ABC, that happens to be the inscribed angle, and we know that the inscribed angle is equal to half its intercepted arc, so we need to state that angle ABC is equal to half, and that would be arc CA, or I call it up above AC. And our reason here is going to be a conditional statement if an angle is an inscribed angle. If an angle is inscribed then it is equal to half the intercepted arc. Okay, and sliding down again. So now that we have established that both of those angles are equal to half of their intercepted arcs, we're going to use substitution because I already stated that AC was congruent to BC. So on one of these, 
let's say number five, I'm going to say, I'm going to use angle uh, ABC. So let's put angle ABC is equal to half, and this time I'm going to use arc BC because I already stated up above that AC was congruent to BC, and my reason for that is going to be substitution. Got a little bit of uh, lag going on here, substitution postulate. And if I know that half of arc uh, BC is equal to CBD, I'm going to substitute again for number 6, where I can then say that angle ABC is congruent. Oops, those should be congruent. Sorry about that. Angle ABC is congruent to angle CBD. And that would be substitution again. Substitution P. Good. And then our last line is our proof line, so we're nowhere done with that proof. So that wasn't too bad. Let's go on to the next page where we have another circle proof. This time we're given circle O with chords AB, BE, ED, and AD. So we have a slew of chords there, and we need to prove triangles congruent. So uh, like we said, we first need to look at the prove line. Oh, sorry, we're proving triangles similar, not congruent. So similar, what are our options for similar? Usually it's going to be it's angle angle similarity, or it could be side angle side, side angle side similarity, or side 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 similarity. And when we mark up our picture, we're going to know which one it is. So they're giving us all of these chords, and if we look at we have chord AB and chord AD. They form an inscribed angle. And then with this intercepted arc right here, which is arc BD, we have another inscribed angle, angle E or angle BED. So they have the same intercepted arc. So by that fact, we know that angle BAD is congruent to angle BED because they intercept the same arc. And similarly, if you look at, I'm going to change colors here, if you look at angle ABE, it intercepts arc AE, and so does angle ADE. So we know that those angles are congruent because they intercept the same arc. And really, we have enough information right there to prove the triangle similar, and then some of you perhaps may have noticed that we also have intersecting chords, which means we can get vertical angles, so we have a third way of getting two pairs of angles um, congruent. So for this, uh, this proof, it's going to be angle-angle similarity is going to be our reason on how we're going to prove the triangle similar. So let's get started with our proof. Number Step number one, we're going to write down the given. Switch over, switch over to black here. There we go. Okay, number one. We have circle O with chords. So write down the given. Circle O with chords. A B. B E. E D. And AD. That's how we're given. So that's number one given. So uh, we can go right to uh, the fact about that we have these inscribed angles that intercept the same arc. So number two here is going to be. And we should probably call them the three-letter angle measure. So let's call it angle BAD. Angle BAD is going to be congruent to angle BED. And our reason is going to be if two inscribed angles
intercept the same arc. Then they are congruent. That's one pair of angles congruent. And then the next statement that we need is going to be, and now I'm, I'm choosing to use the, the angles formed by the chords or the inscribed angles because it pertains more to the circle. So if you, yes, you have an option, you could use the vertical angles, but I'm choosing to use the angles um, formed by the chords. So my next statement is going to be that angle ABE, angle ABE is congruent to angle e -D, uh, sorry, A D E and it's the same reason as number two, so we just need to copy that down. If two inscribed angles intercept the same arc, then they are congruent and so now we have our two pairs of corresponding angles congruent, we've shown proof for that, so we're already ready to say that triangle ABC is similar to triangle EDC and our reason for number four is going to be angle angle similarity postulate cross that T, there we go okay so tomorrow in class we're going to do um, a couple of proofs uh, in, uh, that are involving circle, information about circles, all the stuff we know about proving triangles congruent, so you just have to bridge those two things together. Make sure you do a little bit of review on your own about uh, the given and the get stuff that we had back when we did triangle proofs, and you should be all set. Okay, see you tomorrow in class.